Hey guys, Pablo with BND, and today we're gonna be having an epic story from Let's Not Meet subreddit. And don't forget, subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications bell, give us a like at the end of this video, and leave us a comment. Also, now we have a new subreddit, r slash brokennotdead, check it out, and check out our Twitter. Now with the story. You ordered a pizza, not a date with me, posted by u slash runningcircles234. When I was 20 years old, so 6 years ago, I worked as a delivery girl for a pretty popular pizzeria in my area. Initially, I worked in the late morning to mid-afternoon shift, but when the guy who delivered for the night shift ended up getting fired due to him losing his license because of a DUI, I was placed on the night shift since my boss hired a family friend who could only work my shift for whatever reason. I really didn't want the shift because you never know if people who order late at night actually want a pizza or if they have other intentions in mind. Unfortunately, my boss was a douchebag and essentially told me if I wasn't willing to work the night shift, I was fired. I wasn't exactly in a position where I could be out of work a bit temporarily, so I reluctantly worked the shift. First month of this shift went by without any issues until I had to deliver a pizza to a house that just barely made our delivery radius. I punched it into my GPS and the house was located in a pretty suburban part of the city. I arrive and it's about 11 pm. The block was extremely quiet, decently lit and mostly littered with modern tile houses. But the house I delivered to was a duplex. I ring the doorbell and wait for about 30 seconds. No answer. I ring it again and wait another 30 seconds. Still no answer. I'm standing there getting pretty nervous that something's going to go down. But thankfully, a man opens the door. He looked like he was in his late 40s. He was pretty tall, maybe a little over 6 foot, and he was very skinny. I tell him his pizza is here and he just stands there staring at me. I asked him if he was okay and he responded by saying, Fine, sorry. I got off work not too long ago and I'm zoning out for a bit. Fair enough, I suppose. He hands me the money. I hand him the pizza and as I'm making change, he says, You're really beautiful, you know that. Not really thinking much of it. I thanked him for the compliment and gave him his change. I said goodnight and he did too. I walked back to my car and finished my deliveries for the night. A few days later I get a delivery order to the same place. I head over there around the same time as last time and ring the doorbell. He answers the door very excitedly and said, Hey, it's you again. How are you? I told him I was tired and can't wait to go home, to which he chucked and said, I know that feeling pretty well, as he was pulling out his wallet. As he's counting his money, he asked me what my name is. Being kinda tired at this point and not really thinking straight, I stupidly tell him my name. As I am making change, he asks if he could have my number as he'd love to hang out with someone as gorgeous as I am. Woo buddy, pump the brakes. I've literally only met this guy like twice to deliver a pizza. I had no idea who this guy was and I'm positive he barely knew who I was as well. Another thing to mention is that I looked way younger than I was at the time. I was told by numerous people that I still looked like I was 15 and I was hoping he thought differently and wasn't hitting in what he thought was a teenager. I'm just standing there awkwardly for a few seconds before I muster out. Sorry, I have a boyfriend. He gets upset and says, oh, okay, I say. We stand there in silence before I tell him to have a good night and walk back to my car. He says nothing and still stands at the doorway staring at me until he finally went back inside once I started my car. I got a pretty creepy vibe from this guy and even bought it up to my co-workers and they agreed it was pretty creepy. Except for my boss who overheard everything and claimed I was making up stories and trying to gain sympathy for having to take the shift. Freaking douchebag. A week later I'm working the night shift and we get an order from the same guy again and this is when it finally hits the fan. I arrived at the house at around 10.30 pm and keep in mind that from my perspective on the road it didn't look like a single light in this house was on. I get out of my car and I walk to the front door with the pizza box in my arms. As I'm approaching the door it quickly swings open to reveal a man except this time he was wearing a suit and I jumped back. 
He laughs and say, Sorry if I scared you. I saw you out of the window and I figured out I just opened the door now that you wouldn't have to ring the bell. I was getting scared because as I mentioned before, there are no lights on in the house. So was he sitting in the dark this whole time? And if so, why? I nervously laugh and say it's okay. He asked me if I like his suit, to which I said yes. He then asked me, would you like to go on a date with me tonight? What the hell? I once again tell him I have a boyfriend, to which he chuckles, gets close to me and says, honey, there is no way a girl your age is in a serious relationship. If you go on a date with me, I'll show you how a real man treats a girl. He grabs the pizza box from me and throws it to the side and grabs me by the arms. Hard. I'm officially scared at this point and trying not to cry from the fear that was overwhelming me. I start pleading with him, dude, please, I just want to go home. I don't want to go on a date tonight. He just stares at me with the most sinister look I've seen on someone's face and says, I don't care, get inside now. We're going to have a good time. He starts trying to pull me into the house and I'm trying to resist as hard as I can. After a bit of struggling, he lets go of one of my arms and starts grabbing something out of his pocket, which I presumed was a knife. I did something to this day that I'm still thankful worked as he was doing that. I used my free arm to punch him as hard as I could in his stomach. This stuns him for a few seconds and he losing his grip on me, allowing me to break free. I I quickly run to my car as I get in, he runs at me and tries pulling me out of the car, holding the knife in the other arm and even yells, why are you making this so freaking difficult? I grab the half empty soda bottle I had in the cup holder and throw it and luckily it hits his head and he lets me go. I slam the door and then all of a sudden he jumps right in the hood of my car and starts scratching and banging in my windshield with his knife. I put the car in reverse and quickly back out of the spot and quickly reverse down the road with him desperately trying to hold on. He's banging on my hood screaming, stop the freaking car! I turn on the next road as swiftly as possible and luckily he falls off the hood of my car. I slam the gas as hard as I could to get as far away from this sick bastard as I could. In my panicked state, I drove a couple of blocks down the street and kept making turn after turn onto other side blocks as I feared I was being followed. Eventually, I reached the red light and I slammed on the brakes and just sat in the intersection frozen from what had just happened. I began crying and violently shaking as I was sitting there. It dawned on me that I came so close of losing my life and I couldn't help but feel like I shouldn't have been alive. Once the light turned green, I pulled over to the side and just sat there crying. Eventually, I get the energy to drive back to the pizzeria and almost immediately after I walk in, my co-worker knew something was wrong after seeing me. I practically broke down in front of him and everyone else came to the front wondering what was going on. I fought my tears and explained everything that had just happened. My co-worker comforted me and my boss surprised me and began apologizing profusely for what had just happened and for putting me on the night shift. He took me into the office and handed me a phone to call the cops. They arrived at the store and I gave them my statement as well as taking pictures of any marks on myself as well as scratches on my car from the encounter as evidence. My co-worker followed behind me as I drove home and I collapsed on my bed and strangely enough, I managed to fall asleep. I quit my job the next day and luckily a friend of mine managed to hook me up with a new job at her clothing store. As far as the psycho goes, two days later I received an update from the police. The entire duplex was owned by the guy's brother who lived on the right side with his wife and the psycho Michael lived on the left side of the duplex. I learned that he had been in and out of jail constantly, at first for robberies and assaults, but later on it was for sex crimes. He had been released from jail about 5 months before this encounter for having sex with a minor. When they arrived at the house, he was long gone and his family had no idea where he ran off to, but the police insisted they would find him. And indeed, they did abate not alive. I spent the next 2 months in fear that he would find me and finish what he had in mind. 
but the police contacted me and updated me on the case. Apparently, he fled to another city nearby and attempted to kidnap a teenager walking alone late at night on the street. Luckily, somebody happened to be looking out of the window at the right time, called the cops, and the police caught him trying to force her into his car. He blew a red light near a beast boulevard and a van slammed right into the driver's side of his car. By some sort of miracle, the driver of the van only sustained minor injuries, while the psycho succumbed to his wounds long before the ambulance even arrived. I thanked the officers for everything they did and for informing me and I walked out of the station. I walked down the street and I light up a cigarette as I'm taking in everything that I had just been told. I don't wish death on people, but after hearing about his death, I felt relieved. I felt relieved that he couldn't hurt anyone anymore. I was relieved that I would never have to encounter him ever again and that I wouldn't have to go through with charging him and relieving what happened that night. My last experience two years before this was scary, but I think this one takes the cake as being the scariest as I was alone and face to face with this psycho. Who knows where I'd be if he managed to pull me into his house. Guys, I'll tell you, it's really, really dangerous. There's a lot of dangerous people out there. Most of the people that actually look like psychos, they're pretty normal people. The biggest problem are the people that look so freaking nice. It's like you always hear that story. Oh my god, he was a great neighbor. He used to mow the law of the whole neighborhood. I don't understand when he killed his family. Yeah. So, anyway guys, I hope you enjoyed that story, it's a really, really scary story in my opinion, the most if you work at night, but hey, stories are stories, and this one's an epic one. Anyway, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, leave me a like, leave a comment in our video, thank you very much, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.